Disclaimer, copyrights enforced. The following is based on true events, facts, fiction, second party, observations, nonsense, hearsay, bullshit. You be the judge. One thing we guarantee is 100% pure entertainment. All names, places, persons, and things, etc. have been changed for privacy issues. This show is R-rated, may contain obscene language, nudity, not for persons under 18. Please listen responsibly. I'm ready, bros. I'm ready. I'm, I'm roll, just, roll. Our voices all sound good? Yes. I'm just saying you'd be surprised on the right body. It can look real good. No, I have no issue. I hate boner racks. Like those 100-pound girls, yeah. they're called spinners. That's the, one of the... I do not... I'm not a fan of bone. Ding, ding. Let's, <laughs> get, let's get into it, baby. Ding, ding. Welcome, listeners. Blow Hard Talk Hard here with Julian. Reimer in the house. Sabrina, Rhymer. also present. Welcome, people, listeners. Welcome, Reimer, Sabrina. It's almost that time of year. Christmas. What day is today? It doesn't oh, really matter. Yeah. It's almost yeah. there, though, right? Tis yeah. the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, baby. It feels like September to me, but it does. <laughs> well, the weather's gorgeous. It's hard to feel the Christmas spirit without yeah. it being a white Christmas. Not only white, it's just mentally, there's no lights on the houses like on my street. They used yeah. to be all lights. And right. I don't see that this year. This really I'm, is a white holiday. Yeah. I wonder if Period. there is a place that does the big outdoor Christmas light displays that you can go and drive by and see still. I heard there is a place. Because I know by. where I grew up in the States, there was this like, it was called Domino Farms. And I remember because the people across the street from me would spend like an astronomical American overweight amount of money on Christmas decorations and their house looked fucking crazy. There. And my dad would go, get a load of Domino Farms over there. And I went, what the fuck's the joke? Joke. And apparently, it's because Domino Farms is like miles of Christmas lights. It's fucking there good is, time. To interrupt you, there is a house on Caledonia Avenue in Toronto that won the best decorations. They have really? a, they had like a competition. If you drive by this house, it's a small little house on this street. It is completely light bulb, light bulb everywhere around this place. It's it's actually pretty crazy. But he won like the best. But there is a thing I heard on the radio that you this year because of the. Nothing going around. You could drive by. They're, they created a place where they're going to have reindeer and this. I guess I can't recall where it was, though. I've seen some public parks. I did a little drive through Mississauga and through a, over to Hamilton uh-huh. one evening. Uh, the, the communities have done the lights up. And it, nice. is, it is impressive. You've got to get to the suburbs if you want to see that. Uh-huh. Downtown. Put Toronto, some mulled wine so in the tumbler for mom, some cocoa with the kids in the back. Exactly. It's, do something. And then go for, like, just hop in the car, do a little drive. I like that the people keep the lights up, you know, throughout January. Yes. I think we should do Some this. people don't even take them down because they're lazy. Well, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we never took them down. We just left them. But I've, I've seen a lot of beautiful light displays. Hamilton has some gorgeous, you just go down on some streets and you just do that slow cruise and it's yeah. a nice, comforting, you know, Car drive of people. Enjoy, people, people enjoy like. that. They they feel proud of that. But again, this house on that street I told you it won some award. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. I'll take a picture next time just to show you. But, I've seen I've seen some neighborhoods where they put up like street signs because someone's house is so amazing that it draws too much traffic. It's been a while since that's happened. But, oh, that's funny. Yeah, going. Listen, please. You know. Only so many cars at a time. Don't come down here. Yeah, if you don't live here, don't come down our road. It's only a house with lights. Jesus, like, really? Like, what the fuck is it, really? I, I know it's an opportunity to family bond without people looking at their cell phones. I think, like, hey, guys, put your yeah, cell phone down. Yeah, I know, but as you drive by, how long does it take? Two okay, seconds? next. So here's the question. If you're, like, I, I know that this isn't the position that either of you are in, but imagine, like, you're, you, get, you got wife, kids, whole nine yards, and, you know, you're kind of into Christmas, whatever, but your neighbor is the guy. Like, yeah. your neighbor is the fucking Christmas lights guy. Do you do any? Do you do nothing? Do you try to compete? What would you do? Like, would you turn this into a dick measuring contest? Because remember, you guys both have kids, right? So it's the, like, my dad's lights are better than your dad's lights. I hear, I hear on the news every year there's that, there's that person who uh, 
over does neighbor, it. The neighbors <laughs> fucking hate because he's got too many lights on. He's got on. 10 reindeers he's in the front, asshole. snowman, again, blow up dolls, yeah, sex dolls, everything. House, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, people honking and taking photos, like, fuck off. Well, it's all right, man. You know, you know what, whatever you want to do. You're ruining my do. Christmas. Who cares? With one exception, I saw this news story of some guy, obviously, like somewhere in the States. I am American. I love the country. Don't you get mad at me. Yeah. But this guy lived in the middle of a cul-de-sac. So, so he lived in the middle of a cul-de-sac. So a cul-de-sac is like a street that basically turns around, right? Oh, okay. Like so there's houses okay. all around this circle, but in the middle of the circle, basically like an island, was this guy's house. And he set up like an evil Christmas display. It oh. was like Halloween, but Christmas, and it was spooky, and it was scary, and it was bright, and it was lights, Jesus. and it was loud, and it was freaky. Okay. 24 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and the police couldn't do anything about it. That's people couldn't. American people couldn't sell houses in that neighborhood. They couldn't. They couldn't move to get away from it because they couldn't sell their There's house. There's a technique how to get rid of people like that. <laughs> What I, is it? I can't say it on this uh, show, but I mean, you take a limb. You don't want a guy. You don't want a guy stays at your place and he doesn't want to pay the rent. You can't get rid of him. Yeah, of course you can get rid of him, not by the law. Right. But every day, every time he comes out in the morning to go to work, you get some guy to go over there and punch him in the face and go, "You shouldn't have fucked my sister." There you go. The guy's like, "I didn't fuck your sister." Next day he comes out again. You punch him in again. You get somebody to punch him again. The next day the guy goes, "I told you to stay away from my sister." Now the guy's like, "I don't know who your sister is." And after the third, fourth time, he's got the idea that it's nothing to do with his sister, and he gets the fuck out. <laughs> this Greek <laughs> old man told me this. And I go, that's a great idea. There's those squatters of the Greek community. Wow, and you know why. Yeah, there you, you go. pretend you bang my sister. The guy's like, I didn't touch your sister. Yes, I'm you did. S- I'm so grateful that I have you as a resource if I ever hey, need hey, Think about the idea. If you really think about it, does that not make sense? Would you really want to like live there after a while? <laughs> I mean, no. No, yeah. you're going to get punched in the head every day, so you might as well leave. Anyways. <laughs> let's, on that uh, note. <laughs> on that note, let's uh, move Happy forward. holidays, everyone. Happy, ho- happy holidays, guys. Just make yeah. sure you don't squat. Ho, ho, ho. Ho. Let's talk about the industry. You guys have questions. That's right. This, uh, we're going to flip this around today and just, uh, do a little Ask Julian. Ask Julian. Yeah. Yes. Because I compared myself, excuse me, I compared myself, this guy was asking me, I go, you know the way there's a NASA scientist who builds rockets? Yeah. In this industry, I'm the guy. Anything that you know about building a rocket, I know about the industry. So ask away. You're a, you're, you're yeah, a sex a industry space engineer. Yes. yes. I'm a pervert uh, industry <laughs> engineer <laughs> of everything. Under so, sexopedia, you would be industryopedia. You would. That's be, right. Yeah. That's right. I'm very, very well. Master's, uh, doctorate, everything. I got yes. it all. Okay. So, most basic question that I can think of sure. would be: Why would somebody want? What's the appeal in an in call versus an out call? An in call being when you go to a girl who is stationed at a place all day, and an out call being when she comes to work. Okay. So, you what are. what I would prefer myself? So, what, the reason why I think guys do what they do: out calls. First of all, you have to live alone because a girl's coming to you, so okay. you can't have a neighbor that's nosy. You can't have a a girlfriend, you can't have a guy, you know, people are going to see you, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the reason a lot of them do all calls, number one. A lot of them do all calls, number two, because they come from out of town. Oh, you mean in calls? O calls. Okay. They go to, they stay at their hotel, they, they call because they don't know where the hell to go, right? Okay. So they make the call, they come to them. Um, why would I choose an O call over an in call? Is that the question? Like mm-hmm. you as a client or as a girl? Okay, who's asking the question? Am I a guy? Am I the guy going or am I the girl going? Like, what's okay. the difference? You're the girl, is what I understand the question to be. If I was a girl, I personally would want to do in calls. Why? Why? Because she has the control. It, totally. Yeah. She looks through the people and she sees, oh, that's my that's my neighbor. Yeah. Old call. I'm already there. The guy's already there. She knocks, he opens, fuck. I got recognized, which has happened many of times I've heard. Really? Yeah. Girls have gone to a hotel and they knocked on the door and it happens to be a family friend. Oh boy. And they get busted. But an end call, she looks through the hole and she goes, oh fuck, that's the waitress at the restaurant. And she, and those guys are like regular guys. They, they're construction workers. Mm-hmm. And every day they would go to the, the place and have breakfast, but she would also be a server. And she wouldn't open the door for the guy because... She you spotted know. him and she doesn't want to get recognized. So, 
And how, yeah. does, how does she power? handle that in that situation? She calls the phone person. The phone person makes up an excuse to yeah. say, either she, I like to be honest with people. Yeah. As much as you can. Hey, she knows you, she's seen you, and she can't. Otherwise, other people lie and they say, oh, she just got her period, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. then the guy knows that you're full of shit anyways mm-hmm. because, or you just make up a lie. Like, oh, she's got to make a phone call. She's not feeling, but the guys know that you're lying after. So you just might as well be honest. But I think the flip side is if you had somebody that you already knew that was a regular that you had sort of built up a bit of a relationship okay. with Different and they're going to book a little bit longer, then 100, 10 out of 10, you're going to prefer to take that call than to having and having a regular shift and, of different people coming to see you. Yeah, right. but when I you think. do an alcohol, it doesn't mean she only does one call. She I can, guess that's she true. Can do, she does three, four calls that night. Look at her go. On the alcohol. Now you're a guy. Yeah. Would you prefer the in-call or out-call? I would prefer an in-call. To come to your house? No, you fucking crackhead. An in-call is when I go to you. An out-call is when they come to you. Yes. The reason I personally like in-calls is because... I don't want people to see my neighbors to see some girl walking up at 12 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night, some blonde with big tits. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Depends on who you are, what you live, what you care. doesn't matter, right? But oh, calls are, for me, no. But people prefer them because it's their privacy of their own home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, their bed, their couch, they could plant their cameras. They could do whatever the fuck they want. Plant their cameras. That's another thing with alcohols. Dangerous because the guy lives there. He puts a little camera in the bedroom and he tapes it. In an in call, she's got control. It's her hotel room or her condo. The guy's never been there, so he can't really get away with that. That's actually a good question. What, uh, what do the girls prefer, condos or uh, hotel rooms? Well, a condo, first of all, if you have a concierge, it could be a bitch because you have to sign in, you have to do this and that. Right. Hotel, a nice big hotel, you don't even, you just blend in the crowd, you just walk right up, they don't even notice you. Not these days, there's no crowds. Well, <laughs> in general, right? The, the concierge guys, if they're cool, it's not a big deal. But again, the condos, I prefer the hotels because their hotels are always made up nice, the beds are always guaranteed. Yeah, that's true, there's maid service at a hotel. Well, mm. I recall, like, if you go to a guy's con, they don't make up the beds, they don't change the sheets, it depends on the, 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 the agency or whatever you want to call them, right? So, I personally, hotel. If that's your question, hotel or condo, hotel. If you're the guy? The guy, I think you would prefer the same thing because everything is fresh, clean, you know. What is it about a hotel, at least for myself, when I'm in a hotel room, I think if I'm ever alone, I go, yeah, some sex needs to happen here. That's what they're for. Hotels are good for that, cheating, meetings of some sort of drug deals or something shit like that. Who really goes to a hotel room to sleep? I love when people uh, are like, ew, germs, or ew, escorts, or ew, anything. I'm like, stay in a hotel. Somebody yeah. fucked on your bed and they got paid for it. You know the top thing? We mentioned this a long time ago before. What's the, the comforter on a hotel? <laughs> Throw it on the floor right away as soon as you get in the room. Because they never, I used to work at a hotel, and they never wash them once a month. Yeah, fuck off. And you know hotel mattresses? Well, those big, those big uh, no, things No, I know, like the pretty, duvet, like the, the duvets. So they hotel don't. mattresses are heavier on the way out than they are on the way in. Because of yes. all of the body flakes. Yes. Yeah, all the shit sloshing off on there. That's, that's yeah, flakes. that's pretty nasty. That's yeah. But uh, what was I going to say? There was a funny point I was going to make. The, the <laughs> in-call to the out-call. She has the control on the in-call. The out-call, because the, as soon as you walk into a hotel, yeah. the girl, for example, everybody's watching her. She feels so uncomfortable. Right, because they all can. know. Yeah, she's, you know. she's in her work attire. Well, she's not, no, in the, not necessarily, necessarily just up in okay. booty shorts, but the point is, like, you always feel guilty when you're not. When you're, you know, doing something like that. Even the client, if he goes into a hotel room, into a hotel building, he feels guilty automatically because they have, like, they just feel like they're, they're being watched when mm-hmm. they're not. Yeah, nobody gives a fuck. Well, everybody's got guilt. Um, that's, that's what makes it seem like they're guilty. In the meantime, just keep walking in, buddy. You're allowed to use the washroom. You're allowed to go to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like, what's your problem? Mm-hmm. I think I answered that question. Now, do you have, uh, do, like, people, do you build relationships with the people that work at the hotels that kind of know what's going on? For sure. Okay, For sure. cool. A lot of them do. A lot of them do because they're not stupid. They're there every day, the managers, whatever. So but, uh, they, they either let you or they don't want it. But that's with anything, right? Right. Well, yeah. one of my favorite like garbage shows is about one of my favorite reality shows is about people in relationships after they get out of prison. And this one guy was cheating on his wife. He was working at a hotel. 
He was cheating on his wife with prostitutes who he was giving free re- rooms to, and that's why they were sleeping with him. Yeah. But like th- that happens here too, believe it or not. But I'm not going to get into that. And I say, and I say that these are like uh, these are uh, this is a lower end uh, clientele hotel motel uh, missing Man- two managers, situation. Managers <laughs> take advantage of a lot of things. Remember, like uh, before, the managers would uh, when the maids would start at five o'clock, they would go at four thirty. And to all the rooms and take the tips from the clients, from the people that slept there the night before. Wait, what? Remember before when the, yes. the manager would go in and like for the maids? Okay. And they say I was sleeping there last night, me and you were there. And okay. I left five bucks or ten bucks. Okay. So before the maids started at five or six o'clock to redo the room for the next person, he would go into all the rooms mm-hmm. like on that floor, ten rooms or whatever, how many it was, and take the five bucks, ten bucks from each each tip. Oh, yeah. the tips that were left for the for maids. The maids. I thought the you maids were... would do the okay. rooms and they would have no money. But the manager would steal 50, 100, who knows how much he got. That's fucking yeah. awful. So he got caught. Yeah. Good. And in and, and hotel uh, staff, they, they bust their ass That's making right. those rooms. If you ever stay in one, leave a tip uh, because they, they work really hard to make that. And they're getting less money now because no one's carrying cash. And also, if you're ever in a different country where they're underprivileged, bring, like, toiletries, that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Got to be good to each other. It's the quick, holidays. Quick fact on the alcohol in call thing. Out yeah. calls. I remember one time this girl went to an out call. A beautiful house, uh, a condo down by the lake. This girl walked in. This place was such a pigsty. <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken bones thrown on the floor. Oh, God. Pepsi, like, bottles. Of, but outside, it was like a million-dollar building. He was a slob. She goes, I couldn't even stay in there. Like the bed was This was disgusting. an alcohol? An alcohol. Yeah. Bed bugs, maybe. Kentucky fried uh, chicken on the floor. Like this guy must have eaten the bones and threw the bones on the floor like an animal. And she, I'm like, why don't you just leave? Like wh- that's why alcohols, to me, you, you got, getting. they could describe, they could figure you out who you are. The hotel looks at you. People live like animals and you got to go lie on their bed. There's all kinds of different things. That's why in an in-call, you got full control. Don't open that door. Nobody comes in. Perfect. Now, what what uh, what about this? Okay, what do people prefer booking? Because I see the the booking times: half hour, hour, hour and a half. Well, that's all about money, bro. It's right? also about how much time you have. Because like okay. I've had people before that like always want an hour, but like one day they don't have enough time, but they really got to bust a nut. So they're like, I'll take half an hour. <laughs> well, that's the bottom line. Yeah, you're right too. But the, for me. Are you going to go all that way, take off your pants, do all this, shower for 10 minutes? I feel like a half an hour appointment is, for some people, I guess, like, that's all you need because you don't have the time or whatever. But if you're going to do it, it, I mean, it's also more cost effective to, I mean, it's cheaper to do one hour appointment than it is to have two half an hour appointments, right? Yes, much cheaper. But the point is, some guys can't come twice in the the hour, so they just figure bang, 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 see you later. They're they're happy. Yeah. Yeah. Which I find totally a waste of time because you got to go there, drive there. And then sometimes a girl will just be super, super busy and all she has available is half an hour. And a guy will be yeah. like, that's better than nothing. I'll take it. Well, there's, that's the other question. Is a lot of girls prefer, this is where it goes double ways. Some mm-hmm. girls love half hours because they could do so many. And the other girls hate them because they're such a pain in the ass because you got to shower and this or that. They prefer hours. Mm-hmm. So everybody's got their, the girls I'm referring to here now. There's like a half and half. You ask Julia, she's like, I love 30 minutes. I could do so many. Then uh, you ask uh, Monica, she goes, I love hours because I hate half hours because I got to sit there and fucking keep getting ready over and over and over. Right. The and the half hours but make time. more money though. The half so, hours are, the vol- there's more money on the volume. On the volume. I worked with a girl once who preferred the half hour appointment and her whole thing is, was I don't need time. Usually I book 15 minutes in between each appointment because I don't know how they even do it in 15 minutes. If somebody's like coming on your face and like fucking up your makeup and fucking up your hair, it takes a while to, to yeah, fix that, right? they don't all allow that. They don't all allow that, right? And, not, and also not all guys are going to ask for that. But anyway, some girls would be like, I don't need 15 minutes. I need two. Book me back to back. Yeah. And like I'll make them come real fast. And then like some girls would just like bang, 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 half an hour, half an hour, half an hour. And, those are the warriors. Yeah. Those are the warrior ones. But yeah. still, again, the, those are the ones that come on the faces are the ones that don't put too much makeup on mm-hmm. or hair. Because if you do that, you're fucking, you got to redo it all. That takes more than 10 minutes. Yeah. So that goes for the come on face thing. Is that a pre-service 100%. request? 
What? Like so, like okay. There's got to be a list of. A lot services. of girls don't like to come on the face because of that. Am I requesting it before I show up? Going, hey, am I? No, no, you can't talk desk? services anymore, my friend. Well, in, I, I code it. In but, my personal life, I would never ever let anybody why? do that to me for a li- for a list of reasons. You I find think. Discre- no, no, I think because it's dis- I, have, I have heard. No, I think it, I think it's disrespectful. I think it's patronizing. That's what I, girls like, told it me. feels like assault. I don't fucking like it. Okay. But but if I was a sex worker. And you're gonna give me an extra tip? I don't. And like you're not gonna fuck up my. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't care in that circumstance. Okay. So you have. You have again. But I Jen, would want more money. You have Jennifer. I love coming in the mouth, not on the face. You have Samantha. Only on the face. Can't stand it in the mouth. Mm-hmm. It's always crazy. Like you can never get one preference. Preference. Yeah. They always. It depends on the person. And that's negotiated before shit starts No, out. no, 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 no. Some girls don't do it at all. Like, some girls are just strictly, that's GFE versus PSC. Some girls are just straight A. I'm hot. I'm not doing that. I'm just, you bang, and that's it. Well, here's the question. Do you know the difference between GFE and PSE? Uh, girlfriend experience versus uh, George St. Pierre. Porn yeah. star experience. Yeah. George St. Pierre. But the point is, some girls, uh, you have to know what they are, who they are. You read reviews. Now, if you know the place and you've been there 20 times, you could sort of ask. But if it's your first time, the girl's not going to tell you on the phone. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. She's not going to answer your questions if you're a new person. But if you've been to, with the agency, like you visited 20 times, I'm sure she'll guide you. <laughs> she'll gag you. She'll but guide the, you. She'll oh, guide sorry. you. She'll, she'll guide gag you. you. Sorry, I heard gag you. She will, she'll <laughs> gag you. If you want to be gagged, yeah. Yeah, even if you want to gag, that's a fetish. You could do it, but I don't allow, you know, I wouldn't really recommend getting gagged. But Reimer, if your question is, if the girl is willing to do this thing, do you work it out while you're in the middle of boning or before the appointment? Ideally, it's before the appointment. Yes. Before the, you start fucking, because who wants to negotiate a price in the, which when they you're dicks do. somebody? Which they yeah. do, and you even read about it on the review board. Oh, it's just about to come, and she goes, yeah, it's 20 bucks if you want to come in my mouth. Right. The guy's like, boy, that just ruined the moment. That would definitely uh, be a kind of a, a session ender. That's why it's always good to ask. But at the end, some of the girls at the beginning, they'll be like, okay, I do this, I do this. I, like, it's like, eh, now you're ruining the moment again. Yeah. But again, now, like, you do remember, like, Effie? Mm-hmm. I hug the guy, and I tell him nice and sweet, you know. Mm-hmm. There's a way to be, like, get your reply without being ugly about it. Yeah, listeners, if you haven't listened to our episode with Effie, uh, light some candles. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Check it out. It's number one episode. Well, you can, you know, as soon as I walk in, okay, I do come in about 20 bucks. Facials are 50. I do, you know, it's like, You're okay. ballparking a price here, though. That's not actually what you negotiate. Or do you say that? No, they say that. Some girls have a price list. But what you can do is you can get that message across in a in way a that's not way. a sales pitch. That's what I'm saying. You can be saying. like, be like, if there's anything extra special that you want, I'm happy to yeah. do it for you. Just let me know before we get started because yeah, I don't want to ruin can, the moment. Yeah. Like, a little yeah. tip, I don't mind it. I like the taste. You know, something like that. Yeah. A little t- a little tip, you know, if it goes, just avoid my eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> don't aim for my left eye directly into my eye. Don't yeah. fuck up my yeah. mascara, yeah. basically. Yeah. Mascara. That's the way, you know, there's a way I to talk. I just got talk. my eyebrows done. Isn't there a way to talk about everything you want sometimes in life? Like, if 100%. you wanted to order something. Yeah, it's best to get shit out. You're not going to go to a restaurant and say, hey, give me a fucking steak. Hurry up. Yeah. I've heard it before. Well, <laughs> then that's guys that lose it. But, right. Oh, what do you recommend? Oh, thank you. I like it this way. You know, what do you prefer? Like, what do you recommend? Mm-hmm. And then you get great, you know, it's the same thing with a, a person like that. It's like yeah. I always say, if you want good customer service, yeah. be a good customer. Yeah. Don't just say, hey, you know, I remember this one time, this guy was fucking nuts. This girl was uh, really nice. So he walks in, turn around. Oh, and he turns her around and he just starts banging. And he goes, let's do anal. She goes, I don't do that. He goes, what kind of whore doesn't do anal? Oh. She got so offended. And I'm like, wow. She kicked him out, obviously. Yeah. And then I called him. I go, man. I go, come on, man. I go, who taught? He goes, he didn't know what to say after it. I'm like, even if she does it, the way you approach that, that was fucking ferocious. That was disgusting, bro. Yeah, that's not classy. No, not like, at all. Because he figured he had a lot of money. He could talk to her like that. He goes, what kind of whore doesn't, like, you know, doesn't do anal? I'm like, Wow, man, you really said that, man. Like, but if you had a power fetish, that's something you could negotiate off the top, saying, "Listen, I want to, I want to call you a whore, treat you like different." You know, Again, different. back to the whole point. Totally. You can have any conversation. It's how you do it. It's so, again, like with comedy, you can joke about anything. It's what's the punchline? What are you making fun of? What's the butt of the joke? Right? Some girls don't mind, you know, dirty talk. Yeah, hey, I'm a whore. It's okay. Keep it within the boundaries, but don't say. I'm a whore, you're, you're a piece of shit, your, your life's a mess. You know, like that, who talks like that? But this guy turned her around, started, you know, she's like, 
really? He goes, yeah. And I was like, I don't want to keep repeating it, but it was totally outside the box, and she got so offended and kicked them up. Absolutely. Fair enough. And, and I that- totally agreed. Yeah. Good. Anyways, Ding, let's take a little break, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, listeners, Sabrina here. Baby, it is cold outside, but all we want for Christmas is some of your downloads. Share, like, subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Take your weird cousin into the garage at Christmas. Smoke a joint. Tell them about the podcast. Live your life. Merry Christmas. Love everybody here at Blowhard. Taping? Hey, yeah, I got all this great material. Welcome back, listeners. Ding, ding, ding. Merry Christmas. Uh, Sabrina singing. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about, but she's doing something. What was it? Soup I can't even remember. You were saying, you were saying ding, 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 dong. dong. All right, let's get back to that. I think Sabrina got late before she came because she's really happy today. She got a little bit of zip in her doodah. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Must be nice. No, it's the holiday spirit. Looks like looks like Pat bought me a bottle of wine for Christmas. Yes, thank you, Pat. He gave us all a gift. He he wrapped it in this uh, Toronto Sun newspaper. Very classy. Yes, yes, yes. And there's a beautiful bottle of wine from one of the top winemakers. In, yeah, yeah. I just uh, like Canada. the packaging. I yeah. was going to get you a newspaper. gift, but my present. Oh, I just ran through Vivino, and uh, it's, it's well reviewed. No, no, no. He's uh, much appreciated, Pat. Thank you, yeah. sir. Yeah, Thank it's you. very sweet. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guzzle this back with a nice. Uh, you're going to guzzle cracker. it back because you're a fucking bird. That's why you're going to guzzle it back. You're going to guzzle <laughs> it back with a pack of chips. Uh, Frito crackers. Lays, Frito Lay chips. What are those chips called? Frito. Oh, uh, you know, Pringles. Pringles. I yeah. swear to God, if the listeners could see the gesture you just did, it looked like he was shaking a jar of Pringles into his mouth. Yeah, you yeah. can just. Uh, I you wonder just, why uh, I learned that. The, the, visualize that yeah, one. Old, he has the ball in his hand and a pack of chips with Pringles. Whoa, the, then he's gonna pretend he's romantic. <laughs> Fuck yeah, off. Mr. Pringle pounding. Anyways, so anyways, let's get back to some questions. Uh, yeah. We could wrap up maybe on this uh, subject. What is uh, the preference on in girls, uh, you know, independent girls versus uh-huh. agency girls? What? Why would somebody choose an indie over an agency, an agency girl? Yeah, and what's the benefits? Actually, I'll, I'll okay. There, that that question there is kind of. Um, first of all, every independent girl used to work with an agency. In my opinion, nine out of ten. Okay. So guys already know her reputation. So these indie girls that are out there. If they just didn't magically appear as independent. They did work as an agency. So guys already have a little history on them. But now they decided, like Effie, she's left Minx because mm-hmm. she wants to be independent. She said, less volume, a few more bucks. Because she's busy in her personal life and everything. Makes sense. So these mm-hmm. guys that pick the independence to answer the question, I think they believe that the, I'll pay more money but she doesn't see that many guys. They figured agency girls line them up for cheap value, like which is a fantasy because the girl's not a robot. How many could she possibly do anyways? Right. And then when they think about the independent being, oh, she's high class, she only does one person a day because she gets paid this much money, bullshit. Because which girl's gonna refuse if she's getting 500 bucks an hour, if she got 10 guys calling, she's gonna say, no, no have a busy I'm, day. I'm high class. I'm not gonna take them. Of course she's gonna take them. So guys in their mind like to believe that. So because at the end of the line, at the end of the day, money talks. A lot of it is buying a fantasy with that. Sorry. Yeah, with <clears throat> the independent girl is buying the fantasy. Yeah, because they well, think- with buying it, whatever, regardless of what of who you're seeing, independent or at an agency, the idea like you're you're buying the fantasy, right? That's right. You want to believe you first. You want to believe that she's independent, so I pay more because she doesn't see that many people. Maybe that's true with certain girls. Maybe, but that's false with a lot of other girls because they'll take as many as they can. Of course. They're in Why the wouldn't they? They're making so much more money. Like, right. How does the guy know? They're, they're a business. They're operating. And they. And then they think the agency girls are just simply lined up like fucking, uh, like a lineup, like a, and a machine. And they're just next, next, which is bullshit too, because girls are not robots. Some girls right. can fucking do this many. Some girls can only do this many because their bodies are their bodies. Like, so, see, guys well, have to understand that into, into reality. A girl is not a machine. She can't fuck 20 people. A girl asked me for some advice, and I gave her a lot of advice in terms of like, you know, posting selfies on Twitter and like all the business stuff. And I said, but I said, the number one advice that I am going to give you is to take care of yourself. Make sure that you have a full life outside of your job so that you do not burn out. Because if you burn out, you're not going to give good service. People aren't going to be happy, blah, blah, blah. You can't start hating it. But you can't start hating it. You have to know. It's like gambling, baby. Know your limit. Play within it. it. If you can manage one day a week of good work, but two will kill you, then do one. Mm -hmm. If you love to fuck 
and you want to work three, four days a week, then and, and like that's good for you, then you know that. It's all about know your well, limit. Well, bottom line is if you look at a schedule and you see a girl that's like in the year in the, our agency, and you see her Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like you're, as a guy, you're like, holy fuck, she's, this girl's been banging all week. She's going to be exhausted. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you know, whatever. But if you see a girl that's there twice and your schedules don't line up this week because you're working, I'll see her next week. Now she's like a come off, like, you know, it's like something that you're like looking forward to. But if she's there every day available, ah, I don't want to get into that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, why do you choose an indie over a agency girl? It's a preference. Why is it a preference? Because the, the guy thinks that the girl does less people and he pays more because she's more quality. But he forgets that girl worked at an agency. Right. And is that agency, is that girl who's working independent, is she there because now she's got a clientele That's and a right. reputation? So she's going... She's done her, she's done her like a farm team kind of like in yeah, sports. Yeah, now she's, she's gone independent pro. Yes. You have to put in the legwork. I mean, not. I'm sure that there are exceptions to the rule, but nine, nine times out, out of ten, ten nine you out have ten. to build up um, your. Ex- First of all, you need to get experience so that you can be good at your job. And your name, your and, name. And, you, and you, your you build brand. up your name. You build up your clients. You you build up your reputation. You make friends with girls yeah. in the industry that you can have duos with. You know, you build up really. So it takes some time. Yeah. You're able to make really good money right off the bat. So it's not like starting in the mailroom to work your way up to CEO. You can move a lot faster but you still do have to do work to climb up quote unquote the ladder if you want to go if you want to end up going yeah, independent, successful independent VIP make a shit yeah. ton of money you kind of have to pay your dues but even when you're paying your dues you're making fucking bank yeah. so yeah so that's why a girl would choose an agency as well then At, to develop that reputation What's number the one that they learn they do that because they want to do exactly as Sabrina said even if they didn't at the beginning, yeah. and then maybe as the years go, maybe two years go by, then they realize that's what I'm gonna do. But number one, they need an agency. They don't have a, like they can't get visas, they can't get a room, they can't do things. They need help. They can't answer the phone because they're too busy. This and that. So they just go to an agency to let the work be done for them. They, you know, again, makes it's, sense until it's a they lot get, of work. Until mm-hmm. they get the hang of it, a half a six months later, fuck it, I'm gonna become independent. Everybody knows me. And then they go in there, they raise their rates, and they get their own rooms, they do their own advertising, because they've learned the business now. Right. The thing is that like... And all the power to them, and I recommend that. Work a little bit as an, in an agency, six months to a year, get your foundation, learn, let people know some good reviews, then you'll be a successful indie. Minx, for example, made many good indies. Because they worked, they, got, we, they always had a good reputation for quality looking girls. And now they made, uh, then after the six months, a year, the girls all went indie and they all made good bank. And they still do. I knew a girl that went independent and then was like, you know what? This is a lot of, because to be fair, it is. Booking the hotel, doing the advertisements, booking the clients. It, it, and, then, and then on top of that, having to like go to the gym, buy your lingerie, do your makeup, do all of the other shit that goes into it. It's a lot of work. So she went independent and then went, fuck this, I'm coming back. Yeah, but <laughs> it's that's too much thing. work. That's the thing, though. You can't really go backwards after because if you start charging 500 for an hour as an indie, then you start charging 250. That's when you change your name, baby. Yeah, but guys, right. these guys are not dumb. They all know when you change. Like when a girl's doing really bad, like for example, and she changes her name, oh. they still know who you are. Like they're not fools. Right. They, they go, oh, it was. Uh, and know. a girl who changes her name, honestly, is changing it because she did something wrong. Right. Ooh. It was Lucy last week, and I had her, and now this week, She's I'm Barbara. Victoria, and it still looks like Lucy, going, wait a minute, are yeah. you the same girl? Because you she got a bad it? review, and she thinks by changing the name, she's fooling the, everybody. In the meantime, these guys are all laughing, because they know everything. On right. the review boards. They know who, who is who, you know what I mean? Changing a name means, once you get to that level, you're fucked. I've gotten mess text messages from people before that were like, hey, is... Um, is Jasmine Destiny from wherever, wherever? And like, it's like, no, it's not. But this is a common question because girls will move agencies, change names, and do the whole thing. But guys, again, they'll, they'll figure you out. They'll, they'll post it on the They always figure boards. it out. And they when, they go, when they change agencies, do they change their name as a rule? Some, the good ones won't because right. they have nothing to hide. Yeah. yeah. Once they change their name, that means they're hide, they went to another agency. So they try to change their whole new brand. But guys figure it out. They go, oh, she was there anyways. What's the difference? She's the same girl. But if she's good, why change the name? I had girls that came to us, they kept the same name because they were popular there and they're popular with us. The only reason they just weren't happy where they were, Mm -hmm. like the ownership or the way they were treated. 
Anyways, I think the Ask Julian questions for today was a good start to the new segment of Unless Sabrina has any more questions, but... Uh, the only question I have is if our listeners have any questions. We want you guys to, like, you know, email us, DM us, you know, Sure, yeah, because I us. think we should make this a little segment now. Ask Julian, because you know what? We can have a lot of questions that people want to know the answers to, and uh, I like it. It's fun. You have an encyclopedic knowledge of this kind of stuff. Like I it's said, scientist, NASA, NASA yes. engineer, uh, I don't know. The NASA engineer. Masters, doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> PhD. <laughs> Anyways... Take us out of here, Reimer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, folks, listeners, everyone out there, if you're enjoying this show, uh, we would love to get your support. And all you have to do right now is just like, subscribe, review. If you don't want to review, tell a buddy that you listen to the show and like tell them your thoughts on it because that is a review. A word of mouth is a great way to spread word of mouth. And we would like you to share this show that way. So please do that. Like us, download the show, and we will uh, have more episodes for you in the new year. Thank you. See you next week. Julian. Reimer. Sabrina. We're all people. Reimer seems to like a lot of mouth. <laughs> mouth. Doesn't matter. Ding, 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 Merry Christmas. Ding, ding, dong. Ring a ling, ding, ding, dong. Are you taping? Doesn't matter. Ding, 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 Merry Christmas. Ring, ding, dong. Ring a ling, ding, ding, dong. Are you taping? Doesn't matter. Ding, 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 Merry Christmas. Ding, dong. Ring a ling, ding, ding, dong. Are you taping? Doesn't matter. Ding ding ding, Merry Christmas! Ding ding dong, <laughs> ring a ling ding ding dong. Are you taping? Doesn't matter. Ding ding ding, Merry Christmas! Ding ding dong, ring a ling ding ding dong. Are you taping? Doesn't matter. Ding ding ding, Merry Christmas! Ding ding dong, ring a ling ding ding dong. Are you taping?